And finally, our last class, the atypical antidepressants. So, on last video, I told you I'll talk more about these atypical antidepressants. All of them are really different between them. So, here we go. But before we jump into this new class, uh, let me just encourage you to give a like to this video and if you are enjoying it, subscribe to the channel. By doing that, you show YouTube that you have interest in these kind of videos. Many people can see them because YouTube might suggest them to other people. So I can grow the channel and do more and more videos. Alright, let's jump into it. So, here we go. Let's start with Mirtazapine. Mirtazapine is a tetracyclic antidepressant. It basically enhances the sympathetic output. So, mirtazapine is known to increase the appetite, so it's quite a good one to give to patients with anorexia. And also, mirtazapine is known to decrease the likelihood of experiencing nausea. And also, it can give some sedation, especially, and this is interesting, at lower doses. And then we've got bupropion. And bupropion is a dopamine and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. So, unlike the other antidepressants, this doesn't present any serotoninergic effects, so it doesn't affect the serotonin. And because of that, bupropion is mainly used to help people quitting alcohol or quitting smoking, for example. Then, the trazodone. The trazodone is an antipsychotic drug. Its mechanism of action is quite contradictive. So, it is a serotonin antagonist, so it has got like negative impact on serotonin, but on the other hand, it's also a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, so it increases the serotonin in the synapse. So, it contains negative and positive effects in serotonin. But that doesn't matter. What I want you to retain from trazodone, uh, it's, it can cause uh, sleepness, so trazodone, the Z might help you remember that. So it can be given for patients that are also having some trouble sleeping. And also trazodone, it doesn't give any uh, weight kinds normally. And also trazodone can lead to priapism. What's that? So priapism is basically an erection that can last for several hours. So if we give this drug to a man, we should make sure that they know about this because that can even uh, become a medical emergency. Then the next one is agomelatine. The agomelatine is basically a melatonergic agonist. So basically it acts like our melatonin. It restores our circadian rhythm, our sleep pattern. So that's the main mechanism of action. Unlike trazodone, it doesn't normally give much sedation and also it doesn't provide any weight gain. And lastly, lithium. So, the mechanism of action of lithium is quite complex, but basically lithium leads to some neuroplastic changes that ultimately they lead to some mood stabilization. So, lithium can be quite helpful for people that not only present depression, but also some maniac episodes, so patients with bipolar disorder, and lithium is a drug that contains a very narrow therapeutic window, so patients should be monitored for the lithium levels, and those should be between 0.6 to 0.8 millimoles per liter normally. Then, if the patients go really higher than that, they can present some toxicity from lithium, and toxicity from lithium presents normally with shaking of the hands, people may have some unexplained confusion, unexplained drowsiness, and also some vomiting and diarrhea. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors are barely used in depression nowadays, they inhibit the enzyme that does the breakdown of the monoamines but I've talked a lot more about monoamine oxidase inhibitors on previous videos so make sure you check that one out and as a bonus because you watched this video until the end I'll just tell you about ketamine basically this is a novel drug that is based on a novel mechanism of action it basically antagonizes the effect of glutamate and glutamate is the excitatory neurotransmitter so there are some studies going on and they are trying to find some drugs similar to ketamine but with less side effects lastly electroconvulsive therapy basically this is a novel therapy as well for severe cases of depression 
uh, and it's used for patients with severe depression where like controlled seizures are produced in the patients and it helps in depression. All right, so if you would like me to talk more about these novel therapies that are emerging, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, use the comment section to leave me your thoughts. Just let me know about other topics that you would like me to bring here. I'm planning to bring another video on antidepressants, bring some case studies, so we can put all this information together and think together about the solution for those case studies. So stay tuned. See you soon. To infinity and beyond!